Hi there, welcome to Moxa Security Talks. My name is Jesse and I'm the host. We all know that OT and IT convergence has enabled the possibility for a brighter future. Both Moxa and BNR Industrial Automation are members of multiple industry consortiums such as the OPC Foundation and the IIC. They have been playing an important role in making the world a safer place. Today, we have invited two people from the companies to the show to talk about cybersecurity practices now and in the future. Dina Deschpande, Product Manager for Cybersecurity from BNR Industrial Automation, and Jacqueline from Oxa, who is a Product Manager and Representative of multiple industrial consortiums. Welcome to the show, guys. Hello, Jesse. Hello, Hello Dina. Hi, hi Jack. Hi, hi Jesse. Hello. Thank you. So hey Nina, since BNR Industrial Automation, a member of the ABB Group, is an innovative automation company, and you have loads of experience in the market, can you start off by telling us what you see in the market now regarding cybersecurity? So thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse, for the introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here talking to everyone from the audience and uh, be part of this particular talk show. Um, I, I'm sure that there's something for everyone to take back once things are done. Um, so from the market, so we have been discussing with a lot of customers. Uh, we see that a lot of OEMs, a lot of machine builders, a lot of uh, factories are basically trying to go in the direction of digital transformation or the future factory. They want to build machines for the future. They want to build smart machines, smart infrastructure, etc. And this has been going on for the past few years. It's not something which is like just recent. But then uh, this transformation project has basically a lot of enablers. And uh, these are the building blocks for building a smart factory, a smart infrastructure or a smart machine per se. Now, when we look, about, look at this enablers, uh, a few things come to my mind. Basically, uh, the smart manufacturing or the industrial IoT. Uh, maybe some people term it as Industry 4.0. So you call it anything, but eventually it's adding smart to your existing infrastructures, existing assets, exi existing PLCs or controllers, etc. Or even infrastructure components, I would say. Next is basically customers are looking at or manufacturing industries looking at uh, edge and cloud computing. Now, when you talk about edge and cloud computing, they want to have everything on the premise or maybe in the cloud or trying to integrate these two together with a lot of data. Now, when you talk about data, you talk about uh, big data, big analytics and a lot of business intelligence. Now, whatever is behind this analysis or behind this intelligence is data. Now, we have been hearing that data is the new oil, is the new gold. And that's true. That's where we are extracting all the data from the field and trying to convert it to valuable information. Now, when we talk about doing this, the most important thing comes in mind or is important is the vertical and the horizontal connectivity right from your assets to your controls or to the cloud or to the IT infrastructure. You can say what you want, but eventually communication holds the key. Now, what we spoke about in the past couple of minutes is just the tip of the iceberg, I would say. It's kind of a huge things to talk about or a lot of things to talk about. Most importantly today, when we talk about this kind of transformation journeys, this type of uh, technologies being adopted, what manufacturing industries are looking at is to achieve an IT-OT convergence. And the essential thing to ask themselves is, are the manufacturing setups such as assets, machines, lines, and factories, are they secure? Are they secure today? That's the whole question. Thank you, Ninet. I really like that question. Are the machines really secured in your OT operations? And thank you for your observation from the system's point of view. Now, Jack, can you share some of your insights from the perspective of networking? Do you see the same situation that Nina mentioned? Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks, Jesse. So first of all, thanks for having me today. So uh, to your question, I think this is exactly what we're hearing from our customers right now. So on one hand, uh, they have started to connect like a variety of systems and more and more devices to allow information to be exchanged. Ideally, ideally, this can happen in real time through the help of modern IT or even the computing technologies, which help enable different kind of uh, applications that people have outlined from Industry 4.0 or all the things like uh, just uh, Lina mentioned. Uh, some people refer to this as digital transformation. And if we look from network or system architecture point of view, this is what we call the convergence of IT or OT into one connected infrastructure, no matter it's vertically or in parallel. 
So, uh, but the other thing, however, we also notice that this come along with cost. So cyber threats uh, can be introduced when these OT and IT networks converge. So how to connect and use the data, not only easily, but also securely within the whole context become the fundamental topic for organizations hoping to tap into the benefits of digital transformation. Or even I should say, actually, this is one of the most top priorities, as you can see from the multiple researches or variety of surveys that have been published or even the feedback from our customers. So uh, they have meanwhile the needs uh, because of the benefits behind to achieve this transformation. But on the other hand, without putting their systems, no matter it's existing systems or future systems in a position where they can be compromised, especially when the boundary of the systems is no longer really defined. So uh, for me, it's kind of like a mixture from different side of the balance. Uh, we have uh, seen people start asking like how to take a systematic approach or looking for a framework, best practice uh, from us to support and assist them, establish the correct level of the protection throughout their system life cycle, especially when they start to run into the journey of the transformation. That's true, Jack. Thank you very much. I think these evolving technologies actually bring a brighter future and connect OT systems all the way to the IT systems. However, malicious actors are aware that interconnected OT systems often lack security features, and thus OT systems become easy targets. And we all know from the previous episodes that there is no silver bullet for cybersecurity and that cybersecurity is all about the balance between the risk you can accept and also the cost you can afford. So what is your take on this, Nina? Um, thank you, Jack, for your views and thank you, Jesse. Yes, you rightly mentioned, uh, you are to the point. Uh, the most important thing in cybersecurity is to look at is there is no such thing as absolute security. No one can say that there is 100% security at the moment. This is the reality. You are to the point with that, uh, Jesse. And uh, what I would add to that is basically cybersecurity is more or less a process. It's more or less uh, not a destination. It is kind of a journey. It is an evolving target. So, for example, if a company is secure today, does not mean it's secure tomorrow. And uh, what we see over the years is that cybersecurity risks, cybersecurity attacks have been increasing year on year. And uh, this has been uh, started happening since for the past five to 10 years, I would say. And in recent times, in the past couple of years, it is more or less pretty high and uh, the, the percentage is from reports is really really very alarming and that is something which everyone needs to look at um, and Jesse you also made that point about risk management yes uh, cyber security is purely about risk management but then this brings me to one point uh, which is in the manufacturing setup in itself now a manufacturing setup you take any manufacturing setup uh, a manufacturing setup will have a couple of components or maybe a couple of layers, which we call it as an automation pyramid. Now, an automation pyramid has got kind of an assets like sensors, actuators at the lowermost level. Then you have the controllers and the PLCs, the PCs, uh, above which you have the DCS systems or the SCADA systems. And above that, you have the IT infrastructure, which could be the MES systems, the, the ERP systems, or maybe even the cloud platforms. It varies from industry to industry, company to company, but more or less it's structured in this kind of automation pyramid. Now, we also spoke about data a couple of minutes back. Now, when we are looking at data to be seamlessly connected from your sensors, actuators, controls to the IT infrastructure, the most important thing here is what is carrying this data. The data is being carried by communication technologies, communication protocols, field buses, etc. Now, when these protocols are there in the in the in the factory, what we see is that the protocols and field buses have been in existence for the past couple of decades. And may it be a field bus, may it be an Ethernet-based protocol. The most pressing issue is that the security by design principle is missing in these protocols. You take any protocol which is existing today. Now, this becomes the biggest challenge for manufacturing industries, I would say. All right, thanks, Ninet. I really like the phrase that you say when cybersecurity is a journey and not a destination. And indeed, that OT protocols are not secure by design, and at the same time, they play a very important role in the industrial cybersecurity. 
So also you mentioned that in the future, the boundary between IT and OT networks will slowly disappear due to all the data is going across different planes and everything is going to be interconnected across different networks. So if this is the case, Jack, what is your take on protecting OT networks and their assets? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Jay-Z, and thanks, Ina, for the inside share. So yeah, I think you raised a very important point is regarding the, the protocols. So uh, it's an ongoing journey. So a lot of things need to be taken care of. And when we talk about like convergence of different networks, I think we need to start from a holistic view of a larger interconnected network. And then you will find that the risk actually might be everywhere. So our suggestion uh, would be that you need to start by dividing these things into several subgroups, uh, clarify the situation that might occur in each group, and identify the cyber risks, define the severity as well as the cybersecurity requirements, and then decide proper strategies for each of them. Uh, you should move from point to point, from line to line, and then from segment to segment to conduct the proper and complementary cybersecurity measures. So in other words, the old majors that you need to check are helping you to create layers of defense against any potential cyber attacks. Uh, this is often referred to as the defend in deeps approach. So, and another important uh, point for these layers is that it's not just like simply buying a firewall from Amazon and you just plug in and then your system are secure. So in fact, it is actually a systematic way of thinking that human and process, just like Mina mentioned, the most important thing is actually the process. So everything needs to be involved and in place as well. We start with strengthening yeah, each point, of course. So even going to the very edge, like every end devices and then connect that all of them uh, with the proper design networks. But the most important thing is that you need to establish a measurable monitoring mechanisms in your organization all through the life cycle and the operation of the whole systems. I see. Well, I think that's a very good point to act upon now. We all know that it's impossible to revamp the whole system overnight. But if you can follow the guidelines that Jack just shared, I believe your audience will get off to a good start on their cybersecurity journey. Now, I'd like to hear more about uh, from Nina's side. From your perspective, what prevents your customers from realizing those promising innovations? Um, thank you, Jesse. Uh, Jack rightly mentioned, I really like that uh, thing about defense and depth. That's something which is the top notch important thing which customers need to look at. And uh, when we look at uh, uh, from our side, from the manufacturing side, when we look at having taking the first steps or what is the hindrance for taking these first steps, let us put it that way. Uh, as we spoke about, uh, let us get back to the automation pyramid. When in the automation pyramid, as we spoke about the data, now we the most important critical topic for everyone would be how securely a data can move from your asset to maybe the IT infrastructure without a possibility of an external threat, external actor trying to compromise it. So now this is something which they have to look at. Now when we look at this topic, um, the first thing which comes into uh, picture is the OPC UA, which is OPC UA is like a short form for unified architecture. Now this is a protocol or a, I won't call it a protocol, it is more or less a technology which is now pretty widely accepted and used across industries and it has the most important aspect of a security by design implementation. So that is something which it fares on the very positive side against all the other protocols on the other side. So more or less it is also a protocol or a communication technology which is right from the assets to the IT infrastructure. So it, it ranges from the entire spectrum of the automation pyramid and also horizontally as well as vertically. Um, why I speak about OPC UA is because it is a 100% open standard. Uh, MOXA and BNR both are members of the OPC Foundation. It's a joint activity. It's, it's basically the foundation is driving the towards the success of OPC UA. And uh, the, the manufacturing setups using OPC UA are basically assured of industrial IoT leadership. That's something which is clear and that's something which the foundation also looks at and strives to achieve. Um, more or less from the end customer side, from the factory side, they also want something which is very seamless to connect uh, right from the assets or even between the controllers or between the DCS to the lower uh, levels. And this is the reason why OPC UA is, we see that it is being requested by Fortune 500 companies. So the end users are trying to request for it. 
and uh, i'm happy to say that it is the ecosystem which is supported by a worldwide uh, automation suppliers that's really very important and another topic which is also very important for the audience to know is that it is a cross industry standard it is not limited to a particular industry that's the best part of it and it is also a standard which is really important from the ot side as well as the it side so both are really driving towards the success of it so that makes it a very unique standard but then when we are talking about cyber security we also mentioned that it's having a security by design principle but then apart from security by design or secure by design opc ua brings in a huge amount of secure security principles along with it so the technology basically has got uh, topics such as application authentication or user authentication now uh, this this authentication is carried out by using uh, the x509 certificates or maybe using some tokens and usernames passwords etc apart from that uh, we all speak about the cia triad when we talk about the cyber security topics uh, which basically is the other three pillars of cyber security the confidentiality the integrity and the uh, the availability so now this is something which uh, is completely provided by opc ua in different forms uh, in different ways for example it could uh, bring up confidentiality and integrity using asymmetric encryptions or asymmetric signatures or symmetric encryptions and symmetric signatures uh, apart from that it it really provides a great availability to the control system in itself by the number of sessions being allowed to the particular uh, particular device now this is something which is really important for uh, for manufacturing industry to go forward with such a technology at their fingertips Thank you for introducing the Unified Protocol OPC UA and its secure by design features. Now let's come back to the networking side. How do you guys implement security by design for network infrastructures, Jack? Okay, yeah, I think uh, as you have heard up until now, there are different but complementary ideas from two companies and also mm -hmm. our customers. So uh, like like a secure open protocol technology that are uh, helping the exchange of the data and also the defense in deep approach for the network infrastructure. So for me, actually, this is reflect exactly what secure by DeFi uh, means for the future. So it actually about inter-cooperation across different stakeholders uh, based not only on the interconnected network itself, but the life cycle of the whole system. So uh, since there are multiple people involved at different uh, stages, a structured framework such as the IEC 62443 provides a very good starting point for everybody. And as Masa is a, a provider of the network infrastructure products, uh, we should aim to follow the frameworks uh, constructed in this spec and eventually uh, become certified for being able to conduct a secure development life cycle to design, develop, manufacture and maintain of the products. Then you need to also check up to date contaminations because just like Nina mentioned, uh, the cybersecurity, like the threats, the, the attack, the risks are ongoing, evolving. So you need to check some up to date countermeasures to strengthen the security level of the network devices. Uh, one way to achieve this is to get IEC 62443 4 Dash to certify through a credible uh, organization. And last but not least, uh, we also need to establish a proper response mechanism, such as cybersecurity response team, to handle and response uh, the cyber exposure quickly. So, with all these measures, are uh, to assist and ensure the systems at our customer sites are secure throughout the whole life cycle. Thank you, Ninet and Jack. The OPC UA protocol, along with Secure by Design products, can no doubt create a more secure industrial network. After hearing your thoughts, I think it's safe to say that everyone is responsible for protecting OT operations. It can't be accomplished by a single vendor, and that is why both BNR Industrial Automation and Moxa are contributing together to build a safer world. Thank you, Nina and Jack, for sharing these great insights. Thank you, Jesse, and thank you for inviting. Uh, it, it was always a pleasure to, to talk with the audience, and I'm sure our discussions today uh, may be brief, but I'm sure there is a lot for the audience to take back and process. Thank you, Nina. Thanks, Jesse, and thanks, Nina. I think that's a very good talk uh, in between the companies to explore, to understand the current data, the trends, and what we, uh, we can expect for the, for the next. So I'm glad to be here and looking forward to work with you and also with all the partners uh, together to move on with this digital transformation journey. Thanks. 
Thank you, Jack. All right, this is Moxa Security Talks with Nina from BNR Industrial Automation and Jack from Moxa. Please subscribe and follow us to learn more about the latest cybersecurity trends from experts in the OT industry. See you next time.